Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're hacking the Bolt Corners add-on from Bagapie. So Bagapie is a free add-on, so you don't need to spend any money to be able to get this working, and it has some really awesome options, and one of them is the Bolts on Corners. Now, this is not going to perfectly start out like this, but we're going to hack it to get this as an end result. So what I've got here is an object with some faces and I want to put bolts on each of the corners of these faces. So I'm going to go into face mode and we select each of those faces. So I'm just selecting each of them while holding down shift. Then we're going to hit D to activate bag pie tools and you can see we've got our bolt corner here. So all our modifications that we're going to do to get this working still leave it on this main menu. We're going to click bolt corners and it's going to put, well, bolts in each of our corners, which is really cool. And you'll notice it does all of the faces at the same time. We can change it if we want to different things. So there's a crosshead screw or a slotted screw. Let's just go back to the bolt. We can change other things like the offset to so have it more centered or more further apart. And we can if we need to change the height of this so it's higher or lower. I'm going to put that back to zero. Importantly, we can also use custom objects. Let's click that and we're going to use our quad sphere over here which is as a cube then I've added in this boolean and we want to boolean it together the reason we want to do this is if I just come here without this you can see these are all separated objects they've just been joined together which causes some problems if you want to 3d print if you don't do 3d printing that bit's going to be irrelevant to you but I'll show you some other tricks as well and you might find it useful for modifying things in the way you want so once again D bolt corners and I want to have that custom object and we're just going to click boolean and you can see that this has just booleaned everything together and if we go into x-ray mode this is one manifold object so let's have a look at how this will look originally and then we'll have a look at what we can change I'm just going to S this and shift and Z just to have it not scale on the z-axis let's apply the scale shift and A and bring in a quad sphere scale that down to something relatively rivet sized and then just move that to the side and apply that scale so once you've installed Bagapi I've got a playlist on Bagapi I'll put a link to that in the description I'm sort of starting to build it at this point so there's only one other video but Bagapi is free but there are some paid for options as well that get you loads of assets and really cool things if you want to do like vegetation and there's options of how much to pay that is an affiliate link, so if you do decide to go for those, it'd be really appreciated if you use that link. But essentially, it is free, and you can get it from the Blender Extension Warehouse. Watch that first video if you want to have a look at that. So once you've done that, you just select your face, hit D, and we've got this. Except for actually, you won't have this. You're going to have an option that's going to say something like Setup, and you only need to do this once. Click on it, save your preferences, open and close Blender, and then this will work from that point on. But anyway... D and then go to bolt corner and you're going to notice well firstly where are the bolts now this is an issue because I use blender units which for 3d printing is really handy and these bolts are here they're just really really tiny so we're gonna to have to scale these up massively so actually I'm just gonna click on this and type in 100 you might need to use something different or not do this at all but we'll talk about how to have this automatically at the size that works for you We've still got most of the other options. We've got our options here. We've got our instance offset if you want to move this up or down. And we've got our custom object, but we don't have the option to Boolean everything together. And that is a problem because at the moment, all of this, if you notice, we've got faces that go underneath or through this object here. And basically this is separated to each of the bolts. So this is not gonna 3D print nicely. So we're going to set that up to work so we have that Boolean option as well, and then we'll be good to go. Right, so how do I do that? Well, firstly, we need to get to where the root file of this is saved. So I'm going to hit Win and then R for Windows. I'm going to be honest, I don't know how you should get to this for a Mac. Hopefully someone can comment in the comments section. Well done if you're the first one to do that. That's really appreciated. But in your Run tab, you're going to type in percent app data percent and then click OK. And you're gonna get this file with all of your app roaming data. Blender Foundation, Blender, whatever version of Blender you're currently using, I've got 4.4, Extensions, Blender.org, and Bagapie. And you're gonna find all of these files. The one we're interested in is the Bagapie node tools. I'd suggest that the first thing you do, because we're gonna modify this, is you make a copy of it. So copy it and save it somewhere else, not in this file, because otherwise it's gonna have problems. 
Now, if you can't be bothered to do any of the stuff that I do in the rest of this video, you can happily get this from the Patreon, delete this out and copy and paste it in if you can't be bothered to do this and you fancy helping out the channel. But this should be pretty easy to follow. So we're going to go into this and you're going to get a screen that looks something like this. We've got all of these options, that's to do with some of the other things that you can do in Bagapi. But importantly, we've got our geometry node editor at the bottom and we're going to click here and we want the bolt corner options. So this is our geometry node setup and it all looks quite complicated if you're not used to geometry nodes, but literally you can just copy the things that I'm going to do to set this working. So the first thing we're going to do is work with our scaling. Now, if this scales fine for you or you don't use blender units, you use metric units, you probably don't need to change this, but we need to change up our bolt to about 100 for the scale. So I'm going to click there and grab on scale for the cone, type in 100 and that's got that one sorted. We'll come down here for this cone, drag down that and put that as 100 as well. And then we're going to do the same here for this cylinder and we're going to put that as 100. And you can see these all fit into this option for your bolt, your crosshead screw and your slotted screw. And this is how those objects have been made using geometry nodes. And this is the switch that allows you to do that. What we're going to do is click file and we're going to save it. And if I go into a new blender file, we're going to do exactly the same thing again, apply the scale and we're going to go into face mode there, D and then bolt corners. You'll notice they're automatically coming in and that preferred scale. We can still change the scale and scale them down and up, but they started automatically at that preferred scale. And we can still do our custom objects. Now coming back to this, there is an option to scale later where we've got this transform geometry, but we don't want to use that because it will start affecting our ability to put in our custom objects. So these are the ones that we want to play with here. Now back to this, and once again, we've still got this not joining the geometry. That's the bit that we need to fix next. Now we could have this work automatically, so it automatically does it, but that will slow things down quite a lot. So what we want to do is make sure that this will work and then we can select to do it once we're happy with the location so we make this as efficient as possible. So to do that, all we need to do is create a switch after we've joined the geometry together and have some things being Boolean and some things not. So we're just going to shift A and we're going to bring in a switch node, specifically a menu switch. Now, what we need to do is set up our options. So I'm just going to hit N over here and we want to go into the node options and whatever node you're clicking on, it will start allowing you to modify certain things. And we want to start by modifying this A and B option. So I'm going to go to A, double click it. This is going to be no Boolean. And then our B, let's double click on it, is going to be Boolean. So they're going to be our switches. So let's drag this in here. Oh, at least do it that way. So that's our no Boolean there. So nothing going on. We need to create our option that is going to allow us to Boolean this. That's just N. So to do that, I'm just going to shift an A and then we're going to type in Boolean. We want a mesh Boolean here and we want to have an intersection. We want self intersect and we don't want float. We want an exact solver because it's going to work more of the time. It is going to be a bit slower. You could set up an additional switch that allows you to have one as a float and one as exact, which will give you some more options if you choose to. You might want to click hole tolerant. I generally like to have that not on because it will tell me if there's a problem with my mesh. We're just going to drag that in there and we're going to drag the mesh into the Boolean option. So now we can switch between Boolean or no Boolean and we can tell the switch where to go. Now, what we need is something exposing this in our menu system. Otherwise, we don't have an option to change this. So we're going to shift A and bring in our, our group input. And we're just going to drag this into our menu there. Now, if you want to change this as well, you can just N, go to group. We've got all of our options. If I drag down where it says menu, we don't want to call this menu. We want to call this Boolean and question mark. It's automatically set as no Boolean as the default. And we can put a description, for example, Boolean bolts to the mesh. Once again, file and save, and we should be ready to go. So once again, new file, S, Shift and Z, Control and A, apply the scale, 
and we'll just shift an A and once again bring in our quad sphere. Let's scale that down, move to the side and apply the scale of that. So we're going to select our face and to make this a bit interesting we're going to subdivide edge loops. We're going to go into edges, select all of our edges there, control and B to give a little bit of a gap and alt and E and extrude manifold to get that down. So we've got this with our four sections. In face mode select those, D, bulk corners, we can see that already working. We're going to test everything works. So I'm going to custom object and come into my cube. Works perfectly fine. We can scale those down if we want to. And we've got our Boolean option in the bottom left hand corner. If you don't have that, you just click to bring it up. If I hold my mouse over it, it tells us what it's doing. Boolean bolts to the mesh. We've got no Boolean. I'm going to change that to Boolean. And everything's Booleaned together perfectly. So there you go. That is how we're going to hack Bagapi to make this more effective for 3D printing and allow us to really quickly add corner bolts to any form of object. Now I've tried to make this a bit more pacey. Hopefully that was a good pace that everyone can follow along or at least rewatch bits and everything was clear. Do go and grab Bagapi. As I said, it's free, so you've got nothing to lose on that. And I will do more videos on this in the future because it's just such a great tool set. If you don't want to miss any of those videos, hit subscribe and that bell icon. Please give the video a like if you thought it was worth it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.